So I heard you want to beat the Lost Sector fast. What's good guys, it's Zen, and I'm here with your daily Lost Sector guide. Now I have over 4,000 hours in this game, so if you listen to these tips, we will get those runs going as fast as possible for you and get those exotics. Now all of the information I dropped throughout this video is super concise and I drop relevant tips throughout the entire video. So be sure not to skip anything and watch the entire video for the best exotic farm. I'll give some additional info about this guide while I show you how to get there. But if you want, you already know where it's at. Feel free to skip to this time to get right into the guide. You lucked out because this is one of the easiest lost sectors to farm in the game. I highly recommend spending a few hours grinding this one, since if you follow the tips I dropped throughout the video, you'll be getting regular 3 minute clears, some of the fastest times in the game. In this video I will be using no exotics. This is because I want this guide to be universally useful to anyone watching. Whether or not you have certain builds unlocked, I want to be able to help. With that in mind, I will also not be using any class specific abilities like rifts, dodging, barricades, supers. This way, the guide is applicable to any class. However, exotics of course will help out your runs, so at the end of the guide I'll give build recommendations to increase your efficiency if you have the options available to you. And now that you know how to get there, let's get right into the guide. Alright, so let's talk about the build. In this lost sector, there are three unstoppables and one overload champion. And there's also a solar surge, as you can see here. So for the build, you're going to want to run a bow, a glaive, and a linear fusion rifle. You'll need the bow to take care of the overload champion. Glaives are the play here simply because of their ease of use defeating unstoppable champions. You'll see what I mean in the walkthrough, but if you position yourself as I show you, they are absolutely free kills with no ammo cost at all, leaving all your heavy for the boss. For your glaive, I recommend using Ecliptic Distas since it is easily obtained this season. You get it from Shax or Zavala when you reach level 16. However, if you can't get this, any other close to melee glaive is good. This perk is very strong on glaives right now. Essentially, if you shoot your glaive projectile, you get a huge increase to your melee damage. Now, if you don't have a close to melee glaive, that's fine. Any other glaive will work perfectly good. Now, a solar linear fusion is preferable to take advantage of the surge, but it is completely unnecessary. And as you'll see in the walkthrough, I actually just used this linear here. Now, let's talk about the class build. Your aspects don't matter. You can pick whatever you want, whatever you feel works the best. And the reason why I'm not building into these aspects too much is because I want this guide to be universal for hunters, warlocks, and titans. So the only thing I'm really going to talk about here are your grenades, which you're going to want to run vortex grenades and your fragments. Now you have Echo of Starvation. This is super important because we're going to be running close range with our glaive. So this is going to help us out a lot on the sustainability. You're going to want to run Echo of Leeching to start that health regeneration when you get melee final blows with your glaive. And of course, you're going to want to take Echo of Persistence to increase your devour duration. For your helmet, you will want to run Void Siphon to create orbs of power, activating your devour. For your gauntlets, you're going to want to run Grenade Kickstart and Firepower. Now what firepower does is when you get a grenade kill, you get an orb. This obviously gives you devour. And grenade kickstart will give you a better uptime on your grenades. For your chest, you're going to want to run three concussive dampeners, or at least two of them if you can't fit three, for two of the knights in the lost sector. Trust me, it makes a big difference and I'll show you what I mean. Now your boots actually don't matter since we're going to be mainly using melee damage. And for the final boss, we don't really have easy access to an orb, and it doesn't really make much of a difference at all. So don't really worry about your leg armor, you could just run whatever you want here. I would say use scavenger mods, but if you just do what I say, you're not going to need any heavy ammo drops at all. What you spawn in with will be perfectly fine. So honestly, you can run in with no leg mods and it really won't make a difference. For your cloak, you'll want to run proximity ward since you'll be defeating two of the unstoppables near other ads. You may get quite low, so being able to guarantee the finisher helps a lot. Plus, when you finish them, you'll get devour, so you'll go from being low to full HP, and you'll have the overshield the entire time, just really guaranteeing that process. Now that we know the build, let's run into the walkthrough. Now be sure to pay attention because there's a lot of small yet important things that I'm going to mention. First thing you're going to want to do is if you're not on Hunter, kill that hobgoblin up there with your bow. 
then you're gonna jump over this unstoppable directly into this corner now the reason I'm going into this corner is because he will be looking at you which means his shield will be facing you allowing you to start glaving him in the position that I am currently standing now this position means that you can kill this guy and he's body blocking the ads for you so you're just gonna keep heading back when he shoots his shield at you you just start blocking also, when you're dealing with unstoppables, make sure you're blocking while meleeing as it increases your cast speed. You're going to want to throw the grenade there as that's going to spawn an orb of power giving you devour. Then you're going to head back up and just bow down these hobgoblins in the back. If you are on hunter, you can skip all of that. All you need to do is kill the unstoppable and then run past all these ads invis but I'm doing it this way because I want it to be universal for every single class. You kill that guy just to get your health back up and then you'll run past this guy. Now this guy does a lot of damage if you don't have concussive dampener. Now you're gonna want to reload your glaive before you come over here. So you're gonna jump to the top here. Now you see how the unstoppable is running away. I make sure to get his attention. Kill these two thralls to get my devour going. And then I'm trying to bait the unstoppable to me, but he's not coming to me, so I'm just going to glaive him down. If that unstoppable runs in the other direction, this becomes a lot harder. So you're going to want to make sure to bait him and kill him over here. If he goes over there, honestly, it's a lost run at that point. You will just waste too much time trying to kill him. You'll be getting sniped at and everything like that. Now you see, every now and then I'm turning behind me and killing the Scions. That's just to get my health back up. So we're going to take care of this guy. We're going to use that proximity finisher. You saw I was low there, but I had the overshield, which was keeping me alive, and then I got the devour. Now I see this unstoppable is coming towards me, so it's just rinse and repeat. We're going to try to bait him to me, and then just take care of him very easily. Now again, be sure to reload before you enter this room. Like right around when you throw that grenade to get devour for the first time is where you're going to want to reload. Because if you come in here with no ammo, then you're, you're just going to be in trouble trying to kill those scions. So we're going to take care of this guy, and it's, it's pretty simple. Like I said, we're not using any heavy ammo, and this guy is going down. This leaves us all the heavy in the world to take care of the boss. Now you're going to want to run exactly right here, and the rest of this lost sector is going to be handled from here. First, we're going to take care of the hobgoblins, because it's annoying when they get in the way when we're trying to bow down the overload. Now I haven't seen any data that says you need to kill all the champions, but there's this idea in the community that the higher your score is, the higher your chances of exotics are. So this is what I do. You can do what you want though, but I am just going to bow this overload down. I'm not going to use any linear fusion rifle ammo because when I kill the boss, I'm often quite low on linear fusion. So I want to save all of my linear shots for him. So I'm just very patient with it and I bow him down. Now you'll notice we're at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Now that's mainly because I spent so much time in the first room because I'm not a hunter. If you are a hunter, this is a great farm for you. This will be going very, very fast. All the other classes, it'll take a bit more time, but it's still very easy. That's the thing about it. It, it might take a minute longer than some of the fastest lost sectors, but if you use the strategies that I show you here, it's just so easy. So after you take care of that guy, you're going to kill these two taken goblins because they are giving everything immunity. And then it's simple from there. You're just going to linear fusion the boss down. There's not really much to it. Now I'm on a bit of a limitation here because I'm trying to use, I'm trying to do something that's universal to all the classes. So I'm not using my super, but what you could do here is you could pop your bubble. For the damage increase, you can run up to him with Sentinel Shield, you can throw your Nova Bomb, or you can use Mobius Quiver, obviously, to take care of this boss very fast. And that would take even more time off of this run. So I finish this in about 4 minutes, 32 seconds, but for you guys, this should be 3 minutes all the way down to 2 minutes if you're running it on Hunter. And yeah, that's about it. Very easy run. You just run past these ads, go to the chest, they don't do too much damage at all. And yeah, boom, very, very simple. Now, obviously I didn't run any exotics since I want this guide to be useful to anyone watching, but I will recommend some exotics to use if these options are available to you. Let's start with the weapons. Xenophage has the range we're looking for and will do great damage to the boss due to the solar surge. 
It's also very easy to use since it doesn't require a critical hit. Now, both the Two-Tailed Fox and Gallahorn will do the job, but they can be finicky as the boss moves a lot. The tracking isn't great, but they are still good options. Wishender and Virgos Curve are also decent options as they'll give you that exotic damage while dealing with the overload. The number one choice though is definitely Xenophage hands down, simply because it gives you the ease of use of melting the boss. Now let's get into the armor. Now for Titans, I recommend Laurelly Splendor Helm, Syntheseps, or Worm God Caress. Syntheseps and Worm God Caress give you increased melee damage, which will help you a ton on the second and third unstoppables. This melee damage applies for the Glaives. However, Laurelly Splendor is my top pick since if you get low, it consumes your barricade charge and creates a sunspot. The sunspot gives you restoration, which is a really strong healing effect. This exotic effectively gives you double HP as long as your barricade is charged. Also, if you activate your barricade proactively before you take damage, you get overshield and restoration, which is great sustained synergy. Other options if you have none of the aforementioned are Armamentarium and Heart of Inmost Light, which both help to bolster your grenade uptime. For Hunters, I recommend Omnioculus or Star Eater Scales. Omnioculus will bolster your invisibility by giving you a resist buff, which actually helps a lot. It also gives you a second charge of your smoke melee, which can be used offensively to weaken the unstoppables which would give you a faster time to kill. Since hunters will be running this lost sector much faster than other classes, you may want to run Star Eater Scales. This gives you additional super energy when picking up orbs, which may help you consistently have your super for the boss. What I recommend is run a few with Omnioculus, and if you find yourself not having your super off, give these boots a try. Other options include Wormhus Crown and Graviton Forfeit. Graviton increases your invisibility duration, which can be nice. However, we're going for speedruns, which is why it isn't my top pick. Wormhusk is also a decent option, since it'll give you some health while dodging. Sometimes AI will fire off an attack right as you go invisible, so this will give you a nice cushion of sustain. My top pick for Hunters is Omnioculus, simply since it gives you sustain in the resist and offensive options with the additional smoke melees. Now, Warlocks have a ton of options. Karnstein Armlets, Winter's Guile, The Stag, Controverse Hold, and Nothing Manacles are all good options. Karnstein Armlets will heal you after a melee kill, effectively removing the need to pick up orbs to activate Devour. Because again, remember, a Glaive melee counts as a melee kill. Winter's Guile will give you increased damage after a melee kill, which will increase the TTK against the second and third Ogres. The Stag will give you increased sustain in a sticky situation, but if you follow my steps, you really shouldn't need to activate your Rift. You won't be in a sticky situation. Either way, it's a good option, and it will help versus the second and third Ogres. Controverse Hold will give you increased ability uptime on your grenade, so they're a nice choice. Nothing Manacles will give you an additional charge of your Scatter Grenade, and gives the projectiles tracking. If you wanted to try something fun and effective, these are a decent option. My number one pick for Warlocks are Karnstein Armlets, since they effectively remove the need to activate Devour and make your runs a lot smoother. Winter's Guile is a close second choice though. Now, if you found any value in this video, a subscribe would be super appreciated. These videos are super in-depth content and I try to make them as useful as possible to everyone while also being short and to the point. I upload Lost Sector guides every single day, as well as other good Destiny 2 and some Pokemon content. Either way, thanks for watching and good luck farming guardians. See you tomorrow for the next Lost Sector.